After two mediocre episodes of The Alkalite, what a run, the third has hit. I watched it and it's... <laughs> God. <laughs> Let's talk about it. This is going to be a spoiler video, not really so much a review. If you want the review, here it is. It sucks. The third episode, atrocious. One of the worst things Star Wars has put out since the Christmas special. Nothing's going to top the Christmas special, but this gets pretty damn close. But before I get into it, if you wouldn't mind vroom, force pulling your saber out, firing that thing up, and slicing down on that subscribe button, I would appreciate it. And then you put that back in your pants. Is that a saber in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you're happy to see me. Oh, by the way, what I just did there a second ago is more action than you're going to find in this third episode of The Crapolite, which is now what I'm lovingly calling it going forward. I'm going to go over this thing from a chronological standpoint, so let's begin. 16 years earlier, where we get a flashback of the twin girls frolicking in the woods in a restricted area, I suppose, trying to use some magical witch force powers to move a CG butterfly thing around. The coven of women in this episode don't refer to the force as the force because, I, I don't know, patriarchy or something? That <laughs> they, they, they just refer to it as like a magical thread, an entity, something that they can manipulate and use. May and Osha get in a bit of a tiff, as they're going to do throughout this episode, about whether or not it's good to mess with creatures using these abilities and whatnot. And then they're going to go into town where they see their mothers, plural. Yeah, so brave, so bold. There is talk in the town of some spice cream that you can purchase. The girls are very excited about getting their hands on some spice cream. And the writer was so proud of coming up with this idea of taking ice cream, a nice tasty cold treat, and marrying it together with spice, a magical element that's been in Star Wars for a long time. Dune, of course, has spice as well. But here we are with spice cream. What a fun idea. They say it four or five times throughout the episode. At one point, the girl, I think it's uh, Osha, she's going to get four spice creams. <laughs> Careful, the tummy's not going to agree with that. Too much spice in your diet's going to have you go into the bathroom lickety split. Sure hope you're good with the force, girls, because you're going to be doing a lot of force pushing on the toilet. As an aside, the first two episodes of this show were perfectly average, borderline mediocre at best, with a couple cool action sequences. I thought they were cool. It's subjective, of course. Some people said they're terrible. Everything's terrible all the time. I like to be a little optimistic. But this episode, I mean, it's it plays out like a Mary-Kate and Ashley movie from the 90s. Just pure kitty garbage across the board. And I say this with respect to my viewers, but if you are liking this show, if you like this episode, that's perfectly fine. But it is clear to me now that this is aimed at children, at little children, babies, basically. That, that's the level on display, Mary-Kate and Ashley style stuff. If you like that, that's cool. There's some stuff I like that's aimed at that age too, and that's fine. It's fair. Spy Kids. I like Spy Kids. That was a that was a fun movie. Haven't seen it in a long time, but you know, whatever. One of the moms, Mother Coral. I don't actually know the other one's name. The one that gave birth to these kids, as we're gonna find out later. She looks like a female albino Darth Maul with the horns coming out of the face and everything, the tattoos. But Mother Coral is gonna teach these girls how to do a training sesh, short for session, where she's going to not force push. She's gonna. I don't know, spiritually push, female witch push, a couple of ladies. And this is what they consider an exciting, riveting training session. This phrase keeps getting used too, where it's not the power of one or the power of two, but the power of many. And, <laughs> okay. Meaning we are stronger as a unit, ladies. The force is female after all. This is such a terrible scene. There is no pageantry at all. When she uses the force, she's just going and they put lame background sound effects over it. There's no wind in the room. The pebbles aren't moving on the ground. Hair is not blowing. There isn't even a flicker of a candlelight. It's just them making silly little poses with some sound effects. It gets worse. 
We are now treated to the Mortal Kombat Ascension scene in the film where these two girls, Osha and Mei, their life so far has led up to this, where they're going to ascend and become witches. The coronation, convinced of an all-female coven, of course, they are having seizures, they're doing chanting, one woman's yelping like a bird call or something. <laughs> They are having the time of their life. It's this spiritual orgasmic celebration of ascension. And I assume for many of them, it's the only way they can achieve climax. Mother Coral starts doing a sing-songy chant. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. Again, singing about the, the power of one, the power of two. The power of one, the power of two, the power of many. It reminded me of going to Catholic Mass back in the day where the priest would do this same thing. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. It's weird. Either sing or talk. Pick a lane. Osha's all in. She's ready to accept this privilege, but may not so much. Maybe not, she's thinking. And she eventually does give in, but too little too late. Before they can officially kind of do the spiritual touch, the stupid Jedi interfere and show up. At least Trinity's back. And she's going to do absolutely nothing in this episode, so. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. She and her posse roll up and they want to talk to the two girls. They also want to speak to the father which is an insulting, borderline disgusting thing to ask a coven of witches. They, they're not a fan of it. One says, yeah, there is no dad. We don't need no man to make kids. They quickly move on from this point, which was a little odd not to follow up with further questions. Master Saul wants to train the young girls, make them Padawans. Mother Coral and Darth Mother are unsure of what to do. They're at odds about letting these girls go. Osha's ready though, she wants to train. Which is weird because I'm pretty sure she just wanted to be a witch. Now she's ready to abandon everyone and become a Jedi, become a Padawan. Leave them and never see them again. It's possible I'm mixing the girls up because this character switch was so rapid and out of nowhere. It, it, maybe, maybe I got it wrong. I don't know. The girls look identical. They're twins. And they gave them the exact same hairstyle, which is troubling. I, I just, I can't tell them apart. And I guess that's maybe kind of the point, but also... I don't care enough to really <laughs> look into it further. We then learn a little bit later during a conversation with the moms that these two girls were made using magic, apparently. Let's jump in the Wayback Machine, go to the early aughts when Star Wars Episode One hit, and that dumbass plot point was revealed that Anakin Skywalker was made using midichlorians and immaculate conception. His mom never had a husband, never had a guy. No, not a hit it and quit it situation, go out for milk, never come back. No, the force hit it and quit it. Went out for spice cream and never came back. And so Anakin's just this prodigal child. It was so dumb. But I'm not a fan of the prequels, just full stop. But that plot point specifically made me roll my eyes hard. The Force was always fun because it was this kind of like mysterious, ominous thing. You didn't really know how people got the abilities, where it came from. That's what made it interesting and cool. Getting it down to a science where there's these midichlorians, these little microscopic things in the air that can, I guess, get into people's systems and make them Jedis, that's weird and dumb and I don't like it at all. What's been alluded here is that these mothers were in a laboratory mixing and mashing spices and herbs and plants and midichlorians together before they accidentally added the secret ingredient, chromosome X. Hence, these two beautiful girls were birthed. It's dumb. Osha 11 goes with the Jedi on their ship, takes a little picture test and she nails it. Nobody's seen a better test result than what Osha did. She got them all right on the first try. Person, woman, man, camera, TV, it was nothing for her. No one's ever seen anything like it. And Osha wants to be a Jedi. Mother Coral says, fine, fuck off, go for it. <laughs> You're dead to me. Osha barely even bats an eye at the fact that she's not going to see these people ever again. I guess I can't blame them based on the orgy they had a little bit earlier during the coronation. And also, lightsabers are pretty cool. 
I gotta admit, lightsabers are cool, and that's enough for me right there. I'll bounce for my family tomorrow. I'll bounce for my family right now if a Jedi shows up, says, hey, here's a lightsaber, you want to train in the forest, you want to be able to move shit with your mind? <laughs> yeah, bye kids. <laughs> Before Osha can pack up and bounce, though, stupid sister May comes by her room and says, not leaving, not on my watch, sister. T and Tamara get into a struggle before May takes out a sci-fi torch, drops it on the ground, setting the whole place ablaze. And by whole place, I mean the whole place. The entire mountainside complex goes up in flames in the matter of seconds. The editing here, holy shit, it's bad. What happened? We go from May dropping a candelabra to the entire place burning up, people dead all over. It looks like all the witches died. We don't see any of them die. We don't see any of it happen, which makes me think that this is a misdirect. That later on, we're going to go back and find out, oh, there was actually some bad Jedi that killed these people because they knew the witches weren't going to let May, they weren't going to let Osha go train, or they had a disturbance in the forest and they see some bad in them, so they have to do what has to be done. There's got to be more going on. Or maybe it's the evil force that's going on, the Sith side, that set this whole thing up. Either way, it's a mess. But I'm willing, I'm willing to lay off criticism in this department because it seems so obviously done on purpose. There's no way they edited the way they did and said, yep, this is great. This is perfect. Going from a shot of me dropping this candle thing, the sci-fi thing, to the whole place is in flames. Bodies are all over the ground. The moms are dead unceremoniously. Not a chance. I refuse to believe even this show on Disney Plus is that stupid. They're telling us the entire coven is taken out by what is essentially the equivalent of a Star Wars Bath and Body Works candle. Osha ends up with the Jedi, and May is left alone. Hmm. It's powerful stuff. For a four-year-old. Easily one of the dumbest episodes of a Star Wars show I've ever seen. Full stop, not even a competition. What a waste of time. What a waste of talent and energy. And I don't even hate this because of the magical lesbian birthing. That, that stuff is still kind of mysterious. They don't tell us exactly what happened. And I remember episode one doing something just as stupid. I'm going to hold off on that. My criticism has to do with the overall episode being just a complete shit show. Not fun to watch. The acting's really poor. I know these are kids and acting with kids is dicey at best, but they just felt like they were reading lines off a script and there was no real emotion put into anything. Let me know your thoughts though. Put a comment below. Are you still on board the crapulet? Are you enjoying this? Are you excited to see these mysteries get unfold? Or, I mean, li listen, I've been down this road before. I've given benefits of the doubt. They always bear no fruit. I remember being a staunch defender of The Force Awakens saying, listen, I understand Ray seems to be perfect at everything, but there is a history here we don't know about. They're going to reveal more in The Last Jedi. It's all going to come together. Why she can fly the Millennium Falcon better than freaking Harrison Ford's character Han Solo, or why she's just really good with the Force and all this stuff and doesn't seem to have any problem. It's all going to get explained. They have a plan. They don't have a plan. They apparently never have a plan. And that's probably where the Crapolite's going, but still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit fair. All right, even though I have no reason to be at this point. Please like the video, comment, share your thoughts, and again, pull out that saber, but this time deflect a blaster shot. <laughs> Shooting it back at the subscribe button, <laughs> which has a shield on it, so all you're doing is you're gonna get these videos in your feed, especially if you hit the notification bell, then you'll make sure you won't miss a video. And I would appreciate it. I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. I'm growing it up, it's only a couple months old. I almost able to hit monetization status. I'm almost there, I'm close. So please subscribe and watch those videos. It'll help me get over that threshold and then we'll just be making pennies. Pennies on top of pennies, baby. It's what we do. And look forward to more episodes of The Crapolite being reviewed. I can't wait for my strong female leads to do more force bending action. And for Star Wars, it's about time. Take care.